now. And all right, so today's session is basically going to focus on how the CCP uh, system, the Carrier Collaboration Portal, and uh, the Transportation Management System speak to each other, right? Basically, when you perform an action in CCP, how that's reflected in TM and vice versa. We're going to start with the CCP system, and then we'll go into TM. We're going to be using the same freight order so we see how one action affects the other in different systems. And hopefully, I think we, if within the first hour, we can cover that unless you guys want me to spend more time on this. And then for the second hour, we can go back to TM and do a little more uh, planning, maybe this time for STOs instead of for uh, UNOE scenarios because we've done that twice already. But let's first log in to CCP. Okay, so this is what the uh, login screen looks like for vendors and freight forwarders. It would basically log in. Again, this is a training system. And uh, okay, hold on, maybe I didn't copy uh, something correctly here. Let me see. Okay, so we're in. And basically, the first screen looks like the following. The vendor freight forwarders would have uh, two tabs, home and freight order management tabs. In the home tab, they see basically all the freight orders that they have to still perform actions for. So in this case, we have 180. If we go to the freight order management tab, what we do see is more of a breakdown of these freight orders and the actual uh, step that they're in or the event that needs to be submitted by freight order. Okay, let me see if I can zoom in a little more. So here you go, this is better. We have our freight order here, 8855, 8854, 53, 52, and so on, with the event that has to be submitted, the next open, if you see here, event, which would be tax exemption for this location on the planned date. And it also defines here the source location, street name, also destination location, street name, and so on. And if we keep moving to the right, we also see we have a start date and time for this event that is expected, the means of transport for this specific event, the shipper, which is the vendor who's going to be submitting these events. Now, again, remember, this is the training environment, so we have tons of different vendors here displayed, but in reality, only Caterpillar or Agmin or Stitching, Senkin, and I won't read the last part there, would have to submit events for. We see what mission is the final destination. In this case, it's uh, the uh, UN Interim Force in Mali, the number of stops, and all the way to the right, which is probably the most important, is the actual PO, freight PO, or MOU reference number that they're linked to, that the freight orders are linked to. So we'd have our PO here. We see that this PO ending in 9-3 is for line one, two, three, and four, actually. So all freight orders are linked to the same PO here. Okay, we can also filter and only see this PO instead of seeing all the other ones. We can either do that by clicking here at the column header and sort. And basically add different columns or hide different columns from there. We can just search if we perform the search through here. Or we can actually perform a filter as well, but basically by date. The filtering options don't work that well. Uh, the best option for you would be to add the info here in the search box, and I'm not even convinced uh, if in the training environment that works properly, I can try by just adding the PO here and see if it will only display, there you go. So it will only displays this PO, so now I, there's no confusion with anything else that I'm submitting events for. So all these freight orders, which are four of them, are all linked to this PO, or STO if it was an STO number. We have more columns for the freight PO, and then we have one for the MOU reference. Now. This doesn't really fall under the TM Phase 2 project. It was basically more for the Phase 1 because it relates to COE and troops uh, transportation management. So those would be freight orders linked to uh, contingency-owned equipment transportation or troops transportation. So in this case, we're only seeing the PO here. So what I can see just from this screenshot here is that we have a PO linked to the freight order, but in a sense, we don't have a freight PO because, of course, whoever is submitting these events is a vendor, so we don't need a freight PO for this vendor, basically. And we see that it's Caterpillar, and we see that they have four freight orders that they have to manage. 
So you can also filter by closed events or closed freight orders, sorry, canceled, blocked, or just view them all. You can refresh, you can export this Excel as well. You can also perform a submission of events by clicking by selecting one of the lines and simply going on confirm next. And this would allow vendors, freight forwarders to start submitting events right from this screen. So I could simply confirm next, and that would be like the one we saw yesterday for the TM planner, where we would simply report an event. That would mean that the date and time of today is the accurate date and time of the event, and we'll simply just click on confirm next and move on to our next event, which of course I can simply do that, and you'd see how there is a confirmation window that loads here that says the planned date was December 8th, so we're early, it's December 6th today. We can report the date as today. We can also report the time as 13.45, it is right now. We can make comments, no issues, and I believe here we have no options in the drop-down. So once we click on confirm, our first event would be submitted. See, and now the next event is loading begin for this freight order. We have the message below says tax exemption reported successfully. And that's basically what a vendor freight forwarder would do if they want to simply confirm events directly from the main page. If they want to have a better look at the freight order, we simply click on it. And this will take us to our next screen, which looks like this, where we have our freight order details here. We know that we're looking at this number here. We see that the status is open, the means of transport is air, the distance, who is the shipper, the consignee, so the mission receiving the goods. We have our notes box that we saw yesterday in TM. So any notes that we add in this box in TM or in this box in CCP will be visible in the notes tab in TM. So I'm going to add that just so that we can see that later. I'm going to write, this is a test and I'm going to write today's date. So. I know that I'm not uh, playing tricks on you guys, and hopefully it all works fine. Okay, so we basically just add the note here, and then here at the bottom, again, you guys won't have to do any of this, okay? I, I really want to stress that. You're not doing any of this. This is the vendor or freight forwarder that are performing these actions. I just want to show you what it looks like from this side and how it impacts TM, right? So they would simply add a note, and this note will appear at the bottom. This is a test. 06 12 2019 I can add another one another test so we have more messages another test and I'll put Brian in this case and add that note and these two when I go into this same freight order in TM will be able to see these messages under the notes tab okay besides that what we can do is also attach uh, make any attachments through CCP as well before I start submitting events. If we scroll all the way down, we see that we have the attachment section all the way at the bottom. Basically, it works very simply. We browse, we allow access to our computer, and we add any sort of... Here, the teach back assessment would be a good one to add to this one so all students can see what we're going to ask them in the assessment. So basically, I can make a change here and go and see if I can... Uh, add any other uh, document. So maybe the uh, UN holiday, uh, 2019, it's a PDF. So we can add that there. And once it's there, we just click on Upload, and that document will show up. Okay, this is basically the UN holidays uh, PDF that I'm uh, uploading here for 2019, if anybody wants to take a look at that. And when the date it was added, they can also delete this document from here, and now this attachment will also show up in TM under the Attachments tab. Okay, so let's look at the events, and let's first understand how this works. So already CCP looks better than, than TM, right? It's quite more user-friendly, I would say. It actually makes you want to start using it. So I'm zooming out a little bit so we can have a better view of what it looks like. It's divided by, let's say, um, events where they occur, right? So if we have the Brindisi location where the events are occurring, right, from the Brindisi location, so this would be in a sense the vendor location, 
and then we'd have the Bamako location events. So they're separated by location, whereas in TM, you have a list of all of them. Okay, it doesn't matter. So for this freight order, you would see all the events. We'll go back to TM so you can take a look at that. You would see all the events in one shot. Here they're separated by where they're occurring, whether it's in the um, origin location or destination location of the first stage. Okay, actually the tax exemption that I submitted was actually for the second stage. You see the one that I did before that I just confirmed from the main menu shows as event reported. It shows the plan date, it shows the reported date, it shows my comment, no issues, that is linked directly to this uh, event. The comments that I was adding yesterday in some of the lines of the, of the actual events are the ones that are going to be reflected here. We'll test that and we'll come back and forth so you can see that. Okay, so basically, if you want to submit an event here, this is how you would do it. You can simply go to the reported date and time, add the loading begin, add the time, which in this case is uh, 150, and we can add a comment. I want to see this in TM, okay? And we can simply update our events and that should submit this expected event. So we see here the status shows reported, and we have our comment, we have our date, and again, these can still be changed again, okay? and just like we did in TM. We can change the time and date as many times as we want to, and once we start making changes, if I wanted to do, you know what, it's going to be the seventh, the update events is, again, accessible here. Let me go back and put the sixth, and I'll just do update events. It loads once again, and here's our event. Okay, we can also submit the events that we see here. All the events that we see on screen are expected events. All right, if we see them, they're expected. If we don't, they're unexpected. Now, here's the thing. If we add an event here, okay, we can do this through here, and we select an option of the event that is already displayed on screen. Okay, so for example, let me cancel this. If I want to submit loading end here, and I add the event, and I go and I say, okay, well, loading end, and this is something that they will have to understand, the uh, phrase forwarders and carriers, loading end, and I report it, and basically I report it on the same day, but I report it on a different time. Let me just try and see, uh, 10 minutes it took me to load, and again, another check. Or TM. Okay, I'm just going to write this so we can see that everything I'm writing now is actually what's going to appear later. All right, we see our loading end here submitted as well. So they can do so directly from this screen or they can do so by adding the event. If by any chance they add the event again, right? Let's say I go to event, I make a mistake and I go to loading end again and I do the same date, I do the same time, I do another comment, uh, mistake in case and I confirm it let's see what that looks like so now it seems like nothing happened but let's scroll down here and we see we have another loading end at the bottom and this loading end does not have a plan date it only has a reported date this event was submitted as unexpected in TM we'll see that when we go into TM so if you report one event in CCP and again not you but the vendor phrase forwarder reports the same event twice, the second time it will be reported as unexpected. If you're doing it twice, that means that maybe in the loading end, there was a problem, right? The second time around, right? So the first one, as you can see here, becomes the unexpected and the last one becomes the expected, which I'm not sure if that's going to work too well um, when they start submitting events. Hopefully when we go into production, it will work a bit better because it seems like the mistake is the one that is the expected and the one that was the expected is the one that is the unexpected here. So that's something that we'll have to uh, work with. Again, the same thing, you can't delete the events once submitted, they're there and they'll show up in TM as well. Okay, so maybe the one that's the mistake, we should change it here and say that this is another check for TM and we'll update this one and the unexpected one, which is below, will now show as the mistake. But you see, we still have the first one. So that could get quite confusing. So hopefully that changes once we go into production. 
So basically that's how it works for expected events. And if you want to make an unexpected event at the uh, origin or destination location, just select an option that is either not visible here already in the expected events or you're repeating one. The same thing goes for our next section. We can submit events here as well without a problem. And if by any chance something happens during the transition, like for example, I would say in a main carriage, right? Once the plane has taken off or the boat has uh, set sail, things can happen there too. There can be a delay. They could have some technical issues. Something could have happened. They land at a different airport. Anything that happens while goods are being transported, we, uh, they would have to submit them under tour of events. For us in TM, we don't have a tour of events. It will just show up as another unexpected event. So it won't make a difference. For them, it'll show here. This is probably the most important one for the vendors and freight forwarders as they're the ones who have control over any issues that may happen during transportation. We as TM planners, we don't know what's going on with the boat, with the airplane. We basically just submit events for what happened at origin or destination. So if they want to add an event here, you'll see that the events change a bit. Their damage, delay, chalk arrival, departure, this is for troops, cost change, loss, I mean, tons of options. So let's say that there was a loss. I don't know if we can go into the future here in the training environment. I'm going to try that. And I'm going to say it's uh, 9 a.m. And I'm going to say uh, here, lost half the cargo. Okay, basically just uh, to have that there. And it allows me to submit it okay, even in the future. So we have here a loss as event, the comment, and we see that we have no planned date here, so we know it's unexpected. So right now we have a notes that we've added here. We have the attachment that we've added here as PDF. We have the some expected events that we submitted, even unexpected events that we added here, and even a tour of events. So basically we've, we've done quite a bit for this specific freight order, which is the, uh, the one ending in 5.5. Okay, so let's say that I'm done, or uh, yeah, I'm done with CCP, and I'm going to go into TM now as a TM planner, TS01, to see if anybody has submitted events for any of the cargo. So let's see, let me move on to TM. So I'm here. Basically, as a TM planner, I log into TM. This time around, since my freight orders are already planned, all I want to see is freight orders. I don't need to see freight units or DTRs or search for them or anything like that. So I go directly to the freight order management tab, which is one we only used, I think, to assign carrier and assign freight PO, as well as, uh, no, basically that's it, just to assign the carrier and the freight PO. So we go here, we click on overview freight orders, and what we do is we search by either the inbound or the PO in this case. Okay, we can scroll down to see uh, where we have our PO fields and the ECC delivery. We can go back to CCP to make sure that this is the actual PO. I don't know if it's this one or not. Let me click on apply and see if anything shows up. It doesn't seem like that's the correct PO. So let me go back to CCP and see if I can get the correct PO from here. There you go. Right from this screen, I see that it's the one Ending in three, let me go back here, get rid of this one, add the different PO now, the correct one, and click on apply. And now I should get up to four freight orders. If everything works correctly, there they are. Okay, so these are the four that I have in CCP. Okay, I can close this window, and we see that we still had our four from before, which are these, and it's five, 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 four, five, three, five, two, same thing. Five, five, four, three, two. There they are. So which one did I submit events for? Five, five, correct? So that's the one I'm going to go to in TM. See that I can start submitting events here. How do I know that some of these events have started to uh, be submitted for a specific freight order? Well, let me select this line so we don't lose track. Move over to my right, and I should have, there you go, here it is, the life cycle and execution status. We see life cycle in process because we're already planned the goods, so they're planned, and now we're submitting events. 
and the events are seen here in execution status. We see three of them are ready for execution, so we can start submitting, but we haven't yet, and the other one is already in execution. So we know that some events are being submitted for the first uh, freight order. Okay, I can move this column over to the beginning if uh, it doesn't take too long. It's actually, it seems like it will. Or remember, you can do this manually like this, or you can simply go to the icon and uh, move it up so it's a bit faster, right? And make all the changes that you need to make. So I'm just going to drop it here and maybe make a faster move with the icon that I just clicked on. And we can see here, execution status. We'll look for the displayed columns. Execution status, here it is. And I'll move this one all the way up. And I'll say, OK. And basically, now my execution status should be right at the beginning. So it makes it a lot easier for me to understand which ones are I have to look at, right? So I don't care about the first three. I'm only looking at the last one. Let me click on that. And we already became familiar with what the freight order looks like. And here we go. It went directly to the execution tab because that's the one I was looking at yesterday. And if you look below, you see we have a set of events that are already submitted. We have the loading begin. And the loading end, we have it three times, twice as unexpected, once as expected, tax exemption is fine, and even the loss that happened during the transportation of the goods. So we have all the information we have just submitted right here. We have the source of execution information. We see that it's TM collaboration portal. So we know that these were submitted by the vendor, not by another TM colleague. Uh, a planner in the in the mission, but by CCP, we see the time, date, uh, the section exactly, the origin, location, and destination, and basically that's all the info we need. The other thing that I was going to show you guys was if we select each of these events and we go to the section below under execution, we see event loading begin. I want to see this in TM, so it's basically what I was just adding in CCP, and that will work for every other. Uh, submission mistake see here it is another check for TM and so on right so everyone another check for TM no issues and the final will loss loss half the cargo okay so everything I added in CCP is there exactly the same okay so these events are submitted through CCP and we see how they affect TM directly now I can take some of these events for example uh, this one that says mistake, I can edit, and I can make changes to this event too. So we're basically communicating back and forth with each other. And I can even change the mistake reason here and say, what do you mean it's a mistake? Okay, I mean, just to, to give you guys an idea of all the changes you can make. Okay, actually, if you wanted to communicate with the vendor, you could probably do it like this, event by event, or you can go to the Notes tab, remember that, and communicate through there, or simply pick up the phone if that's easier at some point if things are getting too confusing. I'm going to submit a, a set of events here. You see that all of them are combined together. In CCP, we had a s separation between origin and destination. Here we have them all, arrival, unloading, everything seems as it's all together here. Okay, we can probably submit the departure event, and I'm going to submit it as is. I'm going to go with report. Departure will now go again. Remember, it's chronologically, so it will always show up right after the latest one. The last one is the loss, which I did in the future, and tax exemption, which seems to be at a later time than the one that I just reported, because this one is taking the, the computer time, the system time. I can make a change to that too and say, well, you know what, it's uh, 55, okay? Make the change there and report that event and see if there's any issue or any change there. I guess in this case, it didn't work that well, but you guys are getting the gist of it. Let me see if I can report it here. And it changes anything. Yeah, there you go, it did, okay? So departure now went to the next one. So make sure you change and then report. We can save. We can also add a message. I want to see this in CCP. Okay, so we have that there as well. Remember to insert unexpected events. We do this through insert event. Automatically, it's already considered unexpected, and we can go to the loss 
if we want to add the loss event here, we can say where it happened. Airport, bring DC airport, whatever, whichever one is first. I think the bring DC airport is first. And we can say here, um, please be specific. Okay. And we can report this event. And we'll see this now in CCP. So I think I've played enough with the events here and we're getting the idea of how they communicate with each other. I'll go back to CCP and we'll see how that looks there. But before that, let's go up and go to the notes tab and we can see the two notes that were added. This is a test and the date and another test, Brian from CCP that appear here in my notes in TM. I can do the same thing now and go and say, well, TM, Add this first, you have to add the text type, the language. Uh, there's an option to go internal or external. So if you want to keep this message for your other TM planner in the mission to look at this, or if you want to make this public, you can do here. So please see in CCP. All right. And basically, once I can save this, this will say that it was created here. So let's see, it says save canceled because I think I have the same type of a message uh, text type. That's why I think I have to just change it and maybe let's call this a remark instead. So we won't be able to select the same exact uh, type of text, at least in the training environment. We're not, it won't allow me to submit it. And now we'll see this text in uh, CCP. Same thing for attachments. We go to attachments and we see the UN holidays attachment that we're at in CCP, now in TM. We can even delete it here. We can insert a new one by simply, uh, if we click on edit, let me just make sure we save. And in this case, if we click on edit, we should be able to add another attachment. I'm not sure why this one's coming up right out now. It's not making me look good. But anyway, the idea is that we can simply click on insert, add a file, and the same thing will happen. So basically, we can go back to CCP, we can click on our freight order, and now this freight order should have the events that I just added, for example, departure. I want to see this in CCP, so it's here. So basically, you're like editing the events from another system. Okay, we should also have the notes here. Uh, I don't see the latest note. I don't know why that one didn't go through. Um, let me just go back and check. But basically, we have our events here. Loading in, loading begin. We what else did we add? We added another loss. Here you go. So you see, please be specific. The loss automatically went under the tour of events. And I think that uh, so far that's quite clear in terms of submitting events and how systems talk to each other. I can go back to TM and see if I can if I can make any changes to the notes so that it. In this case, instead of being internal, I want it to be external. Somehow, I don't know why. Oh, see, data has changed in parallel session. Okay, I think it's because I'm logged in at the same time in two sessions. Let me see if I can close this guy and it will let me do so. It's probably that. Uh, no, so basically I think it's because there's the system is not allowing me to do that. And it's showing me the internal text box, but I can't even uncheck it. So any questions on submitting events uh, before we uh, move on maybe to something else? Okay, we've seen how the two sections communicate with each other, which is very important. Remember, CCP is not for you, it's for vendors, freight forwarders, but whatever they do here will show up here in TM. Whatever you do in TM will show up in CCP. Okay, any questions? All right, perfect. So no questions. So basically, I think that was quite straightforward. I'm going to proceed to closing CCP. If we need to go back in here later on, um, let me know and we can take a look at it. Okay, eventually it's going to log off. I'll just leave the screen ready just in case somebody wants to come back to this. And I'm going to exit TM because this specific freight order is that, like I said at the beginning, it's part of the pit environment, so it's not exactly the training environment. 
And what I have uh, ready for today is not directly linked to this environment. So let's get out of ECC for the testing and go into the training system and T5T. Okay, let me select the correct user and let's go back into TM through the training environment this time. Thanks, Marjolaine, Willy, and Honore for confirming through the chat. Perfect. So again, here we are. We have our three tabs that we're quite familiar with. So let's say if we were following that end-to-end -end scenario that I was showing to you guys, and I can uh, share that on screen once again now, so we all know what I'm talking about. That would have been what we just performed now, the last step in TM, uh, at least in, in the uh, graph that I'm going to show you now in the end-to-end -end process. Let me just get to that really quick and share it on screen so you know what I'm talking about. And besides that, all we would have to do now is basically just start submitting events from our side or the vendor side. So I'm, I'm displaying this on screen now. So this is what I'm talking about. You're all familiar with this one already. We've basically performed everything throughout these past few days, right? We saw the integration fields from SRM. We saw the packing. We understood how the DTR and freight units worked. We planned for both uh, vendor delivered stages and freight forwarder stages. We did this section on assigning carrier and freight PO to the FO and also edit dates and routes. And the only thing we were missing was this last portion here, which was the events from both vendor and freight forwarder. It doesn't matter if I just did it for vendor, the freight forwarder does it exactly the same. And also how TM update the events and upload attachments works uh, and actually connects to the CCP system. So we've covered everything from end to end for UNOE scenarios. Okay, for STO scenarios, we're gonna get into that in a bit. It's basically the same end to end process. The only thing that will change is of course the integration fields in an STO and how the INCO terms affect the uh, planners and executioners in TM. Okay, so we go back to our um, TM screen here. Let's actually grab another, I'm going to exit my presentation. And let's go into TM, uh, let's go into the STO uh, presentation. Can we have access to the training environment? Uh, good question, Zina. So basically we've provided all students that are receiving training or teach during the teach back campaign and the mission. We didn't prepare any for you guys basically because it was like from one day to the next and it takes at least a day to get it ready, get your cover pages and so on. I'll talk to um, to the team here and see if we can set up a number of, uh, of exercises for you guys too and you can practice. We'll generate some POs and so, so definitely I'll Talk to the team and we'll see by next week if we can offer you guys some, some uh, credentials and some POs that you can practice with, okay? We haven't done it so far because it was very short notice. And the same thing for you, uh, Honore, because both Unoka and Minurso, you never received exercises with credentials, so you never had a chance to practice. We can get that done for you because you deserve it as much as anyone else. Uh, so yeah, okay, I'll, I'll look into that and we'll get back to you with, with some credentials you can use. Okay, I'm just opening the exercise that I'm gonna use for the STO. Since we're okay with the submission of events. So basically what we'll send both of you guys uh, back in Unoka and Minurso are sheets like these, right? We'll actually add your names to each one of these and we'll add the users and also STOs or POs with the freight POs, carriers, you have to add inbound deliveries, outbound deliveries. So all you have to do is basically just copy paste data into the training environment in practice. Okay, I'm going to use one of these. Uh, let me go to the third one here just to start planning for STOs. Okay, and at the same time, I'm going to show you guys the PowerPoint for the uh, inter information transfer integration fields. 
Okay, I think you guys are becoming quite familiar with that. So let's start with the integration fields first. And here we go. Okay, so let's concentrate on the purpose of this presentation. So just like I did for UNOE scenarios, now we're focusing on STO scenarios for both intermission and intermission transfers. We're going to be separating the two while we do this presentation. Now, we're not going to teach you how to raise STRs and STOs. We believe that you do that already in the mission day to day. So what we're going to do is tell you what fields you have to make sure that are populated in an STO so that eventually it impacts TM and the TM planner and executioner has visibility on the outbound DTR and freight units. Okay, so everything else is just the same way we explained it so far. In this case, the purchasing group for an STO will also derive the planning and execution group in TM. So that is something that was just like the UNOE scenario. Now, this would be our, not really end-to-end, -end, but the integration end-to-end -end with STRs, STOs. Now, I combined both here, STR and STO, even though the final data that is added to the STO is the one that's going to be driving uh, the TM transactions. I added the STR because let's say that if you've populated some of the fields like the receiving plant or requesting plant, the purchasing group, storage location, and so on in the STR, and they simply derive into the STO, we're going to keep the same info. But eventually, whoever's creating the STO or updating it will have the final say on the incoterm, incoterm location, delivery date, purchasing org. So all these key fields here, plant, storage location, purchasing group, incoterm, incoterm location, delivery date, very similar to the shopping cart are the integration fields and STOs that are going to derive and impact transactions in TM. It's going to work differently from the shopping cart basically because the storage location in an STO is the one that's going to be deriving the delivery address and the source address. So even though we're adding the plant to the STO, the storage location information is the one that's going to be derived in TM as the source location and destination location. Purchasing group is going to be, again, just like in the UNOE scenario, deriving the planner and execution group in TM. The incoterm, and now the incoterm uh, plays a different role in STOs. It doesn't work as a commercial term. What it does is it separates the responsibility between the issuing plant and the receiving plant in terms of who does what, right? So if let's say I'm talking about a DAP incoterm, that means that the issuing plant will be responsible for planning transportation. If I'm talking about XWorks, it's going to be the receiving plant. If I'm talking about FCA, and as far as I've understood from a lot of our students, there's barely any case of FCAs and STOs. This is somewhat the responsibility of the issuing plant, but then the responsibility splits between issuing and receiving once we talk about updating freight orders and updating events. Okay, we're going to focus on basically DAP and XWorks for intermission transfers, and then we're going to take a look at intermission. Even though intermission is extremely simple because we only use one inco term, which is DAP, and it's always going to be the same uh, requesting plant that's going to be receiving, right? So the one plant that's requesting is receiving and performing all actions in TM. Okay, so I believe that the integration fields are quite clear by looking at them here. We know that plant, storage location, purchasing group, incoterm, incoterm location, delivery date, purchasing work are key fields in the STO creation. Now, whether we're talking about an intermission transfer or an intermission transfer, these are always going to be the fields that are going to integrate with TM. Okay, I think that that covers those integration fields. I don't think we need to go into the system to show you. It's basically just paying attention to these fields and adding the correct information and how that will impact one or the other. Now, in intermission transfers, one thing that we need to understand clearly is that when we start requesting, right, the STR, usually the purchasing group that is added to the STR will be linked to the um, GSCC, right, the Global Supply Chain Coordinator. And it's the Global Supply Chain Coordinator who will then have to add the uh, receiving 
uh, the receiving uh, missions purchasing group so that if in any case if it's an X work scenario or a DAP scenario of course depending on which one it is they will have visibility on that okay but basically in the STR we're always adding first in an intermission transfer the global supply chain coordinators purchasing group okay if uh, we're doing an intermission transfer it's basically always the same the issuing plant and the receiving plant is the same one okay I think that with that I can cover uh, basically uh, the details on the integration fields we can go through some slides here quickly that will basically repeat what I've just mentioned but I'm going to send these presentations to you if you don't have them and if you have any questions in the meantime let me know okay pay attention that when I'm talking about a specific slide at the top here we always have the reference to if I'm talking about an intermission or an intermission transfer in this case of course with intermissions we always start with STRs and we have the local supply chain coordinator in the receiving plant at the receiving plant receiving storage location purchasing group delivery date purchasing org all the key data already in the STR okay we're looking at the STRs here purchasing group added in the STR will derive in TM as the planning execution group which in this case will be the ones that are the uh, that are in uh, Breen DC okay so that is for the integration fields in the STR which are basically the same integration fields that we'll see in the STO we can move on we see the fields here with the screenshots if at any time I'm going too fast let me know but I think the idea is clear I think also based on the roles that I saw that you guys have you're mostly all focused more on UNOE scenarios than you are on uh, STO scenarios but I think some of you uh, are very interested in what's going on here in this session today so now we're looking at if you see here STOs okay so we're looking at integration fields in the STO so let's say if we're still talking about an intermission transfer as you can see here always at the top what I'm talking about intermission transfer we will see the impact in TM the GSCC adds relevant purchasing group of shipping mission so you see in this case because we're talking about the uh, shipping mission that will then have access so this should be a uh, DAP scenario and where this purchasing group is added is right here so in this case the purchasing group in the STO that we would be adding is related to if we're talking about a DAP scenario in this case for the shipping mission or the X work scenario it would be the receiving missions purchasing group okay so like that the uh, the uh, planners and executioners will have visibility on that okay uh, no problem Marjolaine no problem at all okay let's move on into our next slide here we have our plant and storage location and what that impacts in TM so we see that the information from the supplying plant will derive in the uh, or uh, the origin location of where the goods are coming from and the issuing storage location will be the actual address from the origin location we have the incoterm and incoterm location which in TM again does not refer to a commercial agreement so this is very important we can't stress this enough this basically the incoterm added at header level will impact which plant whether it's supplying or receiving plans transportation submits events manages freight orders okay the Inco term selected uh, indicates the uh, handover location final destination or pickup locations that is well it does that as well and that's why you have a section for the Inco term location as well you see we have our first box here that will show us the Inco term and then the second one which will be the uh, location that we're adding whether it's the pickup location handover location or final shipping location okay we move on to the delivery date and basically just like with a shopping cart the delivery date will generate uh, one or more uh, outbound delivery documents depending on how many we're adding here even though based on what we've discussed with students in our workshops and trainings and usually you only generate a or create an STO for things that need to be delivered at the same time and day right you don't have an individual line for different delivery dates like you do in a shopping cart 
usually if I have three line items here, for example, they should all be delivered in the same date. If I'm wrong, let me know, but that's basically what students are telling us are the majority of the cases. Okay, we have our delivery date, and then finally, if we're looking at the intromission, in this case, we see the intromission transfer now, although it looks just like the ones we just saw, we can see the supplying plant addition information that we add, just like we do with the intermission, and also the inco term that we add, which will determine, again, in this case, we're always talking about the same mission, doing the planning for both. Okay, so in that case, there is no issue there. And we can move on with these slides to the next one. But we're now still looking at the integration for intramission transfers. We know the delivery date, the plant and storage location. Delivery date will generate one or more outbound. Storage location is the delivery address or the uh, source address, depending on which one we're adding, if it's the issuing or the receiving. Okay, again, we have our outbound delivery document, which is generated just like in a UNOE scenario. And the outbound delivery document will uh, automatically create DTRs and freight units. And here we go. We can see it in the TM status tab. You're all familiar with that. We saw this yesterday as well, actually in the system. We click on document flow under the TM status tab, and that will take us to our screenshot for the outbound with the DTRs and freight units. Okay, so basically, as long as we remember those key integration fields uh, for the uh, STOs and why they're important, again, remember, if we're talking about, and we can go back, see the uh, screenshot here of the end-to-end. -end. Okay, let's go and let me share that again with you. Okay, remember, last uh, screenshot here for the integration we see that these are the integration fields. Make sure that they're well, um, let's say, populated, even though plant is usually always populated in STO, storage location is always populated. Usually the purchasing group is always populated as well, right? Uh, the only thing that was new, basically, is the incoterm location, because all the other fields, if I'm not mistaken, they're always, they've always been added. The plant has always been there. Now you just have to understand that the storage location is the delivery address, source address, purchasing group was always there, but now you have to know it's going to link directly with the planner in TM who's going to be doing the planning. The only new fields are the ones that have the impact uh, and that are new that we weren't there before when generating an STO are the inco term and inco term location. Delivery date is clear, purchasing org is usually added too. So remember the inco term we're adding is going to uh, divide responsibility. It's going to say that if it's DAP, it's for the issuing plant to manage in TM. If it's XWorks, it's for the receiving plant. And if it's FCA, there's sort of a shared responsibility between the two. So basically, that's it for the integration presentation. I can uh, exit the screen. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm going to open my next presentation, which is the end-to-end. -end just to show you what I'm talking about in terms of uh, division of responsibility, right? I'm gonna go straight to the point without going slide by slide, and I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about in terms of responsibility, okay? So if we're talking about intermission transfer scenarios, and again, if you guys have been paying attention throughout the days, we see that this uh, right here, this is the... <clears throat> Sorry, this is the transportation cockpit with the freight units. So who has visibility on these freight units? It will depend on the inco term that was added in the STO. So for DAP and for FCA scenarios, it's the shipping plants TS07 who manages the transportation of the FUs. So if any of these inco terms fall under the FCA or DAP, uh, if any of these uh, freight units, sorry, fall under the FCA DAP inco terms, they're the ones that the supplying plants TS07 will have visibility on. If by any chance we determine the XWorks inco term, it's the receiving plant TS07 who will manage the freight units. So basically, for a TS07 in the issuing plant to the receiving plant, this doesn't make a difference when logging into TM. 
you basically log into TM, go into the cockpit, set up your planning profile, which remember for STO, there's just one, and we'll set that up later so we can review that. Go into the cockpit and whatever you see, it's what you plan. You're not paying attention to, is this the shipping plants? Is this FCA, the AP? You already know what's going on. If you have uh, requested goods to be shipped to your plant and you're using an XWorks scenario, well, you'll be the receiving missions uh, TM planner that will be planning this. Okay, if we look at intermissions, and now don't pay attention to the FCA here. I'm gonna try to scratch this one out. Our XWorks scenarios here, we're only talking about DAP, because that's the only inco term for these scenarios. It's always going to be the receiving plant, if you want to call it that, the issuing plant, the receiving plant. It's the plant that's requesting the goods, right? Because it's basically the goods are coming from a region or from your mission to the region itself. But it's always the same planner in that plant doing the work. Let's move on. <clears throat> And now let's see what this looks like visually, okay? So we have our intermission scenario. We're looking at a DAP scenario here. Oh, okay, we have a question. Zina? Hi, Brian. Oh. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. I can. Okay, uh, we just wanna confirm, you said that uh, in the slide before that, can you go back? Yes. Okay, you're saying that the planner, the TF07, is going to be managing the freight units. Yes. Uh, that's not our understanding. We thought that it's the, uh, the freight units is dealt by the TF08. No. And the, no. Who 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 plans the the who who's responsible for the freight units? The logistic user? Okay, so okay. <clears throat> let's talk about the roles in TM first, right? So remember that we had the TS01 for you in the scenarios? Let me just mute you really quick because I hear an echo. Okay, there you go. Uh, so the TS-01 is the equivalent for UNOE scenarios to the TS-07 in STO scenarios. So remember, we're changing scenarios. The TS-01s manage the freight units plan. Remember, freight units is the ones we use to plan transportation. You may be confusing it with freight orders, right? The freight orders is the responsibility of TS-08 and TS-02. Okay, right now, TS-01 and 07 are the same role, but for different scenarios, right? We're talking about STOs, intermission transfers. And these past few days, we were talking about UNOE scenarios. Okay, so that's the first difference. I'm going to you. Is that, is that clear? Yes, yes. Okay, so what was a, a bit of a confusion there with the freight units and the roles? Yes, yes, we're, we're, we, we're confused that, uh, but now you're saying because this is the STO, that the first unit is done by the, the, the one who has the role for the TS-01 on the UNO. Exactly, so it's basically the equivalent for STO scenarios. Yeah, okay. okay so that, that's the main difference. The TS-01 and TS-07 are the same for different scenarios. TS-02 and TS-08 are the same for different scenarios. And that is for the TS-01 and TS-07 is the logistic user, right? Yes, it could be anybody in MoveCon no, that is dealing with transportation. Could be the yeah. logistic user yeah, in the mission as well, yes. It's not the ones uh, working in procurement division that are going to be soliciting freight or any of that. That has nothing to do with this role. Okay, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, so very good. Thanks for that confirmation. So you know what I'll do? Let me just exit this presentation mode for a second. I'm gonna go to the end-to-end -end scenario which I think is always very helpful when we can see this. And let me point out, okay, what I'm doing. So 
You see the main difference here? We're, we're completely changed scenarios now. We're inter-intromission scenarios. So we're no longer in UNOE. This has to do only with STOs, STRs. You see how also the planning is separated now into two? We have our DAP for intermission. We have our intermission with three INCO terms. So this is a different scenario completely. But then the roles, so let's see here up top, we'd have the TS, and I, I really can't write that well on the, the mouse here, but basically this is the TS07, which was our TS01 before. On this one here, we would have our TS08, which would be the equivalent of the TS02. Okay, which is the one that's going to be doing all the work in terms of uh, assigning the freight PO and the carrier and so on, like we saw yesterday, but now related to STOs. And then again, when we get to the events, we're going to go back to our TS07. Okay, and excuse the writing here. TS07, which does the event. So it's the same thing, but now with different roles because we're looking at different scenarios. So I think this could be very helpful to understand the difference between one and the other. Okay, let me go back. <clears throat> I'll exit the screen, and we'll go back to where we were in terms of showing you guys a division of responsibility, just so you, I think it's quite easy, but nonetheless, I'm gonna go through it. So again, imagine we were in the transportation cockpit, right? We're planning the freight units, and now we're seeing who's responsible depending on the INCO term, right? So if it's DAP, the issuing plant in a DAP scenario would be the one responsible for planning the freight unit and that would generate the freight orders, right? So the issuing plant is responsible for each leg in the transportation proposal, transportation route. It, always the issuing plant. If we're going to see plans transportation, and this is related to TS07, okay, and STO. That's why even the role has a different name. It's TS07 TM STO Transportation Planner. The one for TS01 is TM Transportation Planner without the STO on there. And that's how you can tell basically the difference. In an X-Work scenario, and still we're talking about planning, it's the receiving plant who will plan all transportation for each one of the legs, okay, and will be responsible for each one of those legs. Okay, that's the major difference with the INCO terms in STO scenarios. Now, the INCO terms do exactly that. They define responsibility between the receiving and the issuing plants, as in whose TS07 is planning, okay? That for the planning portion. The same thing happens with FCA scenarios. Again, responsibility falls on the issuing plant for the planning as well. Okay, we're still talking about planning. So when we go to the cockpit and we plan, we will have be the TS07 in the issuing plant. Okay, that has to be very clear. When we're talking about intromission, it doesn't matter. Basically, we only have one inco term, but it's always going to be the same right, whether we're talking about a location in the plant, which is a region, or the plant itself, the responsible TS07 will, of course, be from the plant that is, uh, from the actual plant that is requesting the goods from another region, right? So basically, you would be responsible all the time, and that's for every case and every scenario. Okay, this would cover the planning Portion. Okay, then I'm going to go into TM and we're going to do some planning and see this. The only thing is that once we log into TM, we're not going to really see any difference because basically you're doing the same actions as with UNOE, but I want you guys to understand the responsibility division according to INCO term. So I'm adding here some info on shipping plant responsible for DAPFCA in the planning, receiving plant XWorks responsible for the planning. Okay, for uh, intermission, it's always the receiving plant or however you want to call it. So in both cases, remember for UNOE, we didn't have to plan the AP INCO terms because it's all vendor delivered and the system automatically uh, creates freight orders and does the work for you. And for FCA or DAT or FOB, the system planned up to the handover locations. Well, in UNOE, in inter-intermission scenarios, you have to plan as the TS07, whoever has that role, will have to plan all transportation, no matter the INCO term, because the INCO term doesn't have the same effect. 
So whether it's DAP, FCA, or whatever, you'll never get any freight orders automatically planned. Okay, they will always have to be manually planned by the TIA 07. Okay, the process ends up being the same. We see that we have an SOW document just the same. So that doesn't change. I can skip through this one. The SOW looks just the same. The uh, solicitation process would work the same way. The only thing that we need to pay attention to now is going back to the TS08. Now it's the uh, TM uh, freight order manager, right? Whoever is editing the freight orders, whether we're talking about intermission or intermission. Let, let's look at here, managing freight orders. In a DAP scenario, if we're looking at this, we see again, we have an issuing plant and a receiving plant, and we have a DAP scenario. When it was planning, it was the issuing plant who was responsible of planning. Managing freight orders, it's the same, but of course now the role changes. Now it's the TS08 who's gonna be responsible of all the freight orders all the way to the end. So it's quite easy for DAP scenarios, the TS07 and TS08 of the issuing plant are responsible for the entire process. For XWorks, it's going to be the TS07, TS08 of the receiving plant that is going to manage the entire process. The only place where it gets a bit more complicated is in an FCA scenario. But like I said at the beginning, you barely have any of these cases, if any. Actually, submission says that never occurs. But if it does, I have to show you how that would work in TM. You see now X works for managing freight orders. It's the same as planning. We have the two plants. The TS08 of the receiving plant is responsible for all the freight orders. That makes sense because the TS07 from the receiving plant is the one who planned it. Up to there, I think it's all quite clear. Now, in an FCA scenario, things change a bit because now the freight orders are managed differently. The freight orders are shared responsibility between the TS08 of the issuing plant and the TS08 of the receiving plant. The issuing plant has planned this, but now they're only going to be managing the freight order up to the handover location. The handover location in this case is where the receiving plant comes in and now takes over the responsibility of managing the freight order. So you see the freight order of the first leg up to the handover location, whether it's here or here, wherever it is, now it would be the receiving plant who's responsible for doing this. So basically how this would work, the issuing plant would plan transportation and once uh, that is done, could always uh, inform the TS08 or TS07 in the receiving plant of the outbound delivery document, and that's all the receiving plan would need to log into TM and view this uh, scenario, view the freight orders and plan for them. In intermission, I'll go by quickly, it's always the same. It's always going to be the receiving plant or the, uh, the plant that is requesting the goods that will do everything all the way through. Okay, so I think this visually really describes it well. When it comes to uh, managing events, again, we will have a carrier that will also be able to submit events in CCP. In this case, we're not talking about vendors. We're only talking about carriers. Could be freight forwarders or simply let's call them carriers that will be able to go into CCP and submit events. And also the INCO terms will divide responsibility between receiving mission and issuing mission in terms of who does what. So again, for DAPFCA, it's going to be, uh, we're going to have uh, a responsibility, and for the other INCO terms, we'll see who it is, okay? So let's take a look at it visually, because it helps a lot to see this. So who's managing events in a DAP scenario? Well, since in a DAP scenario, it's the issuing plant who's doing everything, in the events, it's also the issuing plant who's doing everything, okay? They're planning transportation, they're managing the freight orders, and they're managing the events. In an expert scenario, well, the other way around, since the receiving plant does everything, plans, manages freight orders, well, they also will manage events. Okay, but again, we're changing to the role of TS07. Okay, in an FCA scenario, it's going to be like the managing of freight orders. Again, a sort of shared responsibility between the two. So if the issuing plant is responsible for the pre-leg, in the uh, managing of freight orders, well, they'll be responsible for it in managing events. 
when it comes down to the main leg, we'll see that the responsibility goes now to the receiving plant, just the same as for the on leg, okay? So that makes quite some sense in that case as well. Okay, for DAP, again, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same. Receiving, requesting plant, managing everything. Planning, M uh, FOs, and also events. Okay, and basically that covers what I wanted to show you in terms of STOs, responsibility, uh, what the impact of the INCO terms is in TM, and I think that needs to be really clear. Okay, so while I log on to TM now, I'm going to log on as the TS07. It doesn't matter if I'm the TS07 of the issuing plant or of the receiving plant. It doesn't matter. I'm going to log in and I'm going to do my job as I usually do. And I'm only going to have access to those freight units that, are, that I'm responsible for. Okay, so let me go back to uh, TM, which I believe I'm in right now. So basically, I would again do... I logged in using the credentials from this person here, so I know that. I can look for the STO. In this case, I don't have the outbound, so I can just look for the STO. I can go back to TM. We're all very familiar with this process. It's exactly the same as with UNOE, but in this case, I'm the TS07. So I'm looking for the DTRs and freight units that were generated from the STO. I can add that to the original order. Make sure I paste that. See, instead of the PO now, I'm adding the STO because now I have a different role. And when I click on Apply, I should see a visibility on the DTRs that are linked to this one. So let me make sure I'm not doing things correctly. Let me see if I have any other information here in the change query. Maybe I'm logged in as the incorrect user. So basically, just by adding the STO number, or maybe I can so the STO number is fine here. Let me just log out and make sure I'm logged in as the correct uh, user, just because now I lost track with the presentation. Just close this. Go back here. Any questions so far from you guys? I know that it may not be, uh, there must be somebody there that is going to be performing these transactions. So it's uh, really important for whoever is performing these transactions to pay attention to what we're doing here. So let me use the STO user. I think I was using still the incorrect one. In the meantime, Nothing. I don't hear any beeps. I don't see anything in the chat, so I'm continuing. And let me see now, going to my transportation requirements, if I can see my uh, ETRs linked to my STOs in this case. Okay, make sure that you have no data again, and see if we can add them here or here, original order. Now I hope all these users are set up fine. If I, there you go, okay, so I was logged in as the wrong user before. All right, so you see there's no difference between the actions I showed you guys throughout the week with UNOE and STO. The only difference is that now I'm the TS07 instead of the TS01. I'm performing the same exact actions. I don't care as the TS07 if uh, somebody, the, the local supply chain coordinator added an Incoterm Xworks or FCA. That doesn't worry me from here. All I have to do is search by the PO that someone is telling me that I have to search by or the information that I'm provided. I see that there's a DTR and an outbound. I see that nothing has been planned for this so far. It says in planning. And we have our execution not started. So we see we have both here, perfectly fine. So I can begin with my uh, transportation. Remember, we can go into the cockpit from here or we can go through the planning, just the same. The major difference is the following. 
the uh, transportation, uh, the planning profile, sorry, is the major difference. Because here, we actually have a lot less than in the other one. So let me just select these all, get rid of them, so we start from scratch and go with new. Remember the planning profile and how important that is. If this is not set up properly, you won't be able to see any of the freight units that you're looking for. Once you set it up, if you set it up once, it'll remain there for good. So the planning profile, even if you take a look now at the planning profile, you see it changes. It's UNOE, but it's STO. So even the planning profile is different. The good thing about this planning profile is that you don't even have to worry about selecting XWorks, FCA, DAT, FOB, any of that. You only have two options. One is for troops, which is not the case. The other one is for STOs. All INCO terms are combined together in the freight units. And how is that possible? Because for TM, in, in STO scenarios, the INCO terms mean nothing in the sense that we're not going to have vendors involved. Everything is all the same in STO scenarios. The only thing the INCO terms are really impacting is who is managing what. Receiving mission, issuing mission. So once I can set up the freight unit here and the planning profile here, there's only two options. I can always set this up and say, uh, whatever, uh, STO profile. There's only one. I can save, and I never have to do this portion again of the planning profile. It's set up for good. I can even set it as my default if I want to and save. My profile is set up, but remember this has to be set up properly. We select it, we click on continue, and we should go to a transportation cockpit with all the FUs that I have to manage. See, remember the freight units that I have to manage as a planner. Okay? I think that's clear. We're back on track as to what we've been doing so far. And really, the difference between UNOE and STO is practically invisible, except for the fact that we searched for, a, for an STO instead of searching. Remember, when we were here, we added an STO instead of a PO. That's basically the difference. The screen looks just the same. DTR, outbound instead of an inbound. Those are the major changes. The profiles are different, but once we get into the cockpit, it all looks the same. We're planning for, uh, for freight units linked to STOs. You can do the same thing we did yesterday with the inbound and the PO. We can go to the uh, personalization icon here. We can search for our purchase order. If it's here, maybe we can write order and see if there's a column for that. We can add it. Remember that. We can make sure that it's all the way at the top. So there's no confusion later when we're looking for things. We can save, and now we'll have our STO right next to our freight unit. So we know we're planning this STO, this freight unit. Okay? We see the linkage, and we know we're not making any mistakes. Once you do this, you can always perform the search by STO if you don't even know your freight unit, which is very valuable. So if I click on the magnifying glass, and let's say I'm going to select a, an STO. If I go back to my exercise here, it's the one ending in 551. So I can go here and say, well, give me the one for 551. And I can now know which freight units I'm supposed to uh, plan transportation for based on my STO. I don't even have to know my freight unit. I can always go through my STO number. Remember, you can also do this with the filtering option right from the column. Custom filter, make sure that you say it contains here. We add the number, we click on OK, and now we only have displayed our STO. There's no room for error here. We also see that it's been divided into three. Okay, I just have to make sure here because I think that for some reason these are planned already. Okay, it shows me here planned. Remember that we're sharing these credentials with students simultaneously. So I'm delivering this training here using this STO. Well, there may be a student somewhere else in the mission now doing this same exact transaction, and I think that's exactly what happened. That's why it was already surprising that I could see the uh, freight orders here planned. Uh, yes, Zena? Let me unmute you. Okay, I think, uh, hold on. There you go. Okay. Yeah, okay. The STO number you're talking about, uh, is it the same FTO number of the uh, for the the the, F, the actual STO that was done for the property, right? 
Exactly, the same one in UCC. Yes, the one that we did for the material, uh, the STO that is done based on the STR that was done, right? Exactly, yes, same one. Same number. So that one is referred to the material, not the, not the freight. Exactly. This refers to the, like, the purchase order for goods, the PO. This refers to the STO for the materials that were transferred. But it's linked okay. to your freight unit. Yes, I'm just confirming. I'm confirming the entirety. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. No problem at all. Anything else? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm muting you again. So, uh, as I was saying, I believe that it could be the, the case that somebody's planning these simultaneously, okay? Let me just check and see. I'm going to click on the freight unit because it's easy to see if someone is. In a, and exactly. See, I clicked on my freight unit, and you see that we already have three freight orders, and they're all freight forward delivered because, again, remember, there's no vendor delivered stages and STOs. So, basically, it seems like they were planned. Okay, so it doesn't matter. We can definitely go with the ones that are planned already. We already learned how to plan. That's uh, not new. I just wanted to show you guys the that there's really no difference between doing transactions in an STO scenario as there is for a UNOE scenario. You can link the documents together. The only difference is you now have a different role. It's TS07 instead of TS01, and you're linking STOs to freight units instead of POs to freight units. That's it. The process is exactly the same. At no point do you ever wonder if you're the issuing plant or the receiving plant or what type of inco term this is or anything. You're just going on with your transactions. I just wanted to show you that so you understood the, the separation between the two. So now that if I look at the one that is already planned, and let me get out of the cockpit here. If I look at this one that I was showing you guys before, okay, we have our information here. We can take a look at some of these freight orders and see if they have been, uh, if events have been submitted for them. And none of them have been submitted. So basically this is quite a recent. We also see that the packing, I think we're still having a lot of trouble in the training environment with packing. Today I actually had a live session through MS Teams where we did packing and it didn't uh, transmit or translate into TM even though it worked in ECC. But in production, you'll have to go through with it. So basically, every other step that we have to do now, you're already familiar with, but now it's going to be done by different roles. So at this point, now that we have the freight orders, the TS08, which is the equivalent of the TS02, comes into play, right? We go through the shopping cart for freight, we go through solicitation, we get a freight PO, we come back to TM as the TS08, we assign carrier, we assign freight PO, and so on. So I can actually go back to my main screen and even see if the if we have assigned, but now I'm going to take the uh, original order here. I'm going to go to freight order management. Now, I didn't even log out because I know that this role can do everything in the training. I'm going to go to freight orders. I'm going to add the STO that I just copied now. See, people are using it at the moment because I see that... Uh, fields populated. If we have the field here, I don't think we do. So let's go to change query. I think we have the field for STO under change query. Just as a reminder, because we showed that at the beginning of the week, you guys may have forgotten. So we have our STO field. We paste, we apply, and now we should have all our freight orders that are linked to that STO. So if I'm the TS08, you see there's three, you see they're dummy carriers. So that tells us, A, we still have to assign carriers to these three. Remember how we did that? We can do that individually by selecting just one, or we can select them all and assign a carrier in the subcontracting button, assign carrier in SRM. In the exercises that we will provide you, all you'll have to do is paste these two pieces of information, carrier, back, Paste it here, click on the scan, I think this is the, uh, I'm not sure exactly the name of it, scan logistics, something like that, and the freight PO, and we click on OK. Nothing seems to happen, so just remember, you refresh, dummy carrier changes to 
the actual freight forwarder, scan global logistics. So remember that, that is something we only did once, so I thought it was worth going uh, through it again. Whoever is doing this exercise in the uh, mission is going to be quite surprised to see that it's already assigned. Uh, sorry, but um, I also have my class to teach here. So let's see. Uh, basically, that's the idea. Do you guys want me to show you anything else in terms of freight orders, searching, assigning, maybe go back to the planning, do something over again before I move on? Because really, we've covered all aspects of what we can do in TM from different scenario points of views, but you realize that all the clicks and go-tos are exactly the same. The only thing that I think I want to stress is the integration fields, right? Remember that for STOs, the integration fields are practically the same ones you're completing and, and populating today, not necessarily you, but the person who has the role, except for the Incoterm. The Incoterm and Incoterm location were fields that were usually not added in an STO. Now they're added. And what they do is divide responsibility between TS07 and 8 in issuing plants and receiving plants. Everything else you added normally. Now you just understand that your purchasing group is going to derive into a planner execution group in TM. Your storage location is going to derive into a location address here, whether it's source or destination. So we see this source location here is the one that will appear in the uh, database, the master data in ECC for that storage location. And what else? The delivery date will generate different inbounds. I think that's pretty much it. The purchasing org is usually what we add, and the plant is usually what we add nonetheless. So basically, those are the key elements. And you have to understand why they're important to add. Anything from your side? I'm going to give you guys a minute to think about a question. Or something you want me to do again. So let's take a look at the roles, right? For UNOE inter intermission transfers, then who's responsible for master data, the carrier collaboration portal role, and then production support. So basically, we started our sessions with UNOE scenarios. So we were basically putting the hats on of TA01, who's the TM transport planner, TA02, TM manage freight order. And we didn't see the display all, but basically these are roles that are granted to uh, requisitioners, for example, if they would need to have visibility of the system but don't perform any transactions. We saw that TS02 was basically for procurement division, TS01 for MoveCon, logistic uh, user. So depending on who is more qualified to have this role in the mission. For inter intermission transfers, you see it here, TS07, 8, and 9. Okay, but it's the same role in a different scenario. TM, STO, transportation planner, TM, STO, freight procurement, and actually it could, should be called uh, freight order, and then the TM, STO, display all. For master data, uh, there's uh, very few people that have access to this role. TS05s will be for the vendors, freight forwarders, and TS06 is basically for the people that are providing Umoja support. There's also a definition of the roles here in these slides that I'm going to share with you guys too, so you understand what each one is responsible for. Okay, and the same thing for the TS07 and 08. I think this definitely clarifies that misunderstanding with the roles that we had at the beginning. And I believe that's uh, it. Uh, from there, that's the other thing I wanted to clarify, just the roles themselves. Nothing more? Guys, remember, we still have a bit more time of this session. If you want me to cover something, I will. Maybe we can also go through some review. So I can, I know you guys have to take an assessment that you should pass, and I think you're, you're more than ready to pass it, but maybe we can go through some critical, um, let's say, questions or things that we usually inquire about in the assessment to see if you're ready, unless you want me to go through the system and uh, cover different, uh, maybe, plannings, editing freight orders, submitting events. So, Zina, I take it a uh, yes for the review of the exam, or yes for the uh, going back to the system.
Sorry, Zina. I see a yes and a please do, but I'm sorry. Review. Okay, perfect. There you go. Okay, so let's do the review of the processes in uh, in TM. Let's go for another, let's see, STO maybe, and we can plan an STO this time around instead of a UNOE scenario. It basically, the process is exactly the same. Let me see if there are any that we can plan. I'm going to change the date, or maybe I can go to planning directly, and in the cockpit, see which ones are not planned. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm back into the cockpit. You see now how I went there directly. I didn't have to set up my planning profile because I had already set it up. I set the, uh, if we want to go back, remember, change profile selection, I can go back to the STO profile or profile selection screen. Since I basically have one profile done and it's set as default, I'm never going to even have to go back to this screen once I set it up. It's going to take me directly to the cockpit like it did now. Here is where I can see all the other freight units that are not planned and their delivery dates. So we have here tons more that are supposed to be delivered on the 20th. You know what we can do now? We can, uh, let's see if we can combine, let's combine freight units because we haven't done any of that so far. The only thing I see here is that they're all same uh, loading location, same destination location. So we're not going to be able to play around with the routes, at least not in this case. But we can go with that option just so that you see what it looks like. So let's think that we're getting the uh, 680 here and the 679. Okay, I'm selecting these two STOs with these two goods, sets of goods that are going from the same origin to the same destination and within the seven-day range. So here you go. We have it there. It seems like it's not planned. It shows here as if it's not. Okay, we can actually minimize this. Remember the quick map layout that I can take a quick look at here. UN map layout. I'll make sure that the two that are selected are the ones that I'm updating the map with. Remember this from yesterday. We have a folder here. We have a map. And now that should show us <coughs> the... Uh, trajectory see so basically they're all going exactly from the same origin to same destination okay, so that's quite simple I could select all of them actually I could combine every single freight unit here because I think they're all within the seven day range yep and they're all from same source same destination so basically I could just do that select them all and plan but I'm not I'm going to just select two and this time I'm going to go to transportation proposals And now you're going to see the difference between planning for one single one and when we're combining more than one. The only thing is since the locations are the same, you're not going to be able to really appreciate how uh, eventually we're finding the best proposal to combine them together. Okay, but just so you know, this can be done. So you see now we have proposal one, one freight unit, and another freight unit. And we have four stages for one, four stages for the other. Well, let's check and see if the stages are the same ones. So we see that these are actually, in a sense, going to El Janina Airport, Kuwait City, Kuwait City to Um Kassar Port, and then finally to final destination. The other one is doing the same exact thing. So even if it seems like there's going to be eight uh, actual freight orders, there should only be four because they're exactly the same transportation route. Okay, you see both appear under one proposal, both appear under a second, and so on. We can select this, and if I select this and go with accept route instead of accept planning, what I'm telling the system is that I want to accept every single individual route. That means that instead of having four freight unit stages and four freight orders, I may have eight freight unit stages and eight freight orders, because what I'm doing there is I'm telling the system that, you know what, instead of having the same exact source destination, what I want to do is combine my stage two with my stage three, with my stage four, and see eventually where I can put these together. So I don't know if we'll be able to appreciate it with this one, 
because they're all the same. <clears throat> but I'm going to try it nonetheless. Okay, so you see that now? And I'm going to make this bigger so you guys can see what I'm talking about. You see now that we have four freight units, 0, 9, four freight units, 0, 10. So what the planning has done, the, the acceptance of the route has split every route as a separate leg that I can plan uh, separately without the need of combining everything. I don't think it even generated freight orders or did it. It hasn't generated any freight orders yet because what we're doing is we're only planning to see which ones we can combine. So since you're not accepting planning, you're accepting route, there's no freight order. There's only freight units. Now here is where I would say what I want to combine together. So if I'm telling the system, again, selecting all these separate legs, if there were any that we could combine together, you select them all, you would click on transportation proposals, and now the system is going to give you proposals linking together as many routes as it can. In this case, we're not going to appreciate the difference because they're all the same. But in another scenario where you have different stages, it will show you how at one point both of them meet at the same place. And when you accept the planning then, you'll have instead of eight freight orders, you'll have four or three. Okay, so in this case you have, see, you don't really notice the difference because everything is the same. In the other case scenario, imagine El Janina here was going to some other airport. Well, that other airport would also show up here at some point with that a specific leg where it can be combined together. Okay, we plan this. And once we plan, now we'll have our freight orders, which should be a total of four. Let me select it first, accept, and now let's see how many freight orders the system generates. See, one, two, three, four, right? So basically it's only, it combine, it's combining all the routes that I selected before into one, two, three, four. The other way around, if anything was not in this uh, transportation proposal, it wouldn't show up here. So instead of having the four, maybe I would have five or six, depending on at which point the legs meet together. But I would have to go to a specific scenario like that to find one. It may take me a good half an hour. I don't want to waste my time uh, looking for, or your time, sorry, I should say, uh, looking for freight units that have different uh, addresses. But you understand how that works. The planning will give us the freight orders. The routes will give us split freight units that then we can combine together, plan transportation to get the best option between all of them, all the stages together. All right, remember, we can simply uh, plan this by going to save. And now we have our freight orders here, finally. We will see now that when we go to our freight orders, we'll have this freight order linked to both STOs, we'll have it linked to both freight units, we'll have it linked to both DTRs, so this freight order should be linked to everything uh, in TM <clears throat> that is linked to that specific freight order. So let me go to the document flow and see. So you see I have my freight order, I have one freight unit with its DTR, and then I have another freight unit with its DTR. I have one outbound here and one outbound here. So this leg, this stage, is combined with two freight units. The same thing will happen with the items. It's going to be combining both items. We'll have one outbound with one item, which is the uh, locking product here, and the next one, which is also a locking product from another. So we know all the goods that we're transporting together because we combine them, right? So that's the way the combination works. If I had combined 20 freight units, I would have 20 freight units here with 20 items if there's one item for each. Okay, so that's how simple this is. If by any chance, if I go back to the document flow, we wanted to get rid of the freight orders that we just planned for. Okay, let me open this one and also the other freight unit on the side. If you uh, did a wrong type of planning and now you want to make sure that the freight order is deleted, right? You said, oh, I made a mistake. I want to get rid of this freight order. There's also a way to do this, right? By clicking, uh, for example, to get a better view of it. Let's go to stages. We see the stage. We edit, we go here to 
the double arrows and we go to cancel document. Once you do that, it'll say if you cancel, there's no way back. So you continue and then this freight order disappears. Okay, you basically have to delete every single freight order that you have in sequence. Now, I didn't do the sequence thing. I just simply just went and clicked and that's what I got. If I refresh this page, I don't know if it's still going to be here. Yeah, see, one of them already disappeared. If I go to the next one, and I delete that one too, and that's the way you would delete freight orders one by one. Okay, you click on edit in a specific freight order, double arrows, cancel document, and say yes. You would have to go one by one and in sequence to delete if you have made a mistake after you have saved. All right, you see you refresh this one again, and it'll tell you, see, how they go disappearing one by one. What that means is that then, because I can delete them from here, I could click on the bin, but this only deletes them from being displayed here. It doesn't delete them from the planning. You have to go one by one, enter in each one of these, and delete the actual document, or cancel the document, I should say, instead of delete. And once you cancel, it disappears. Okay, so basically, that's the way you get rid of unwanted uh, planned freight orders. And the last one, and once that is done, I can go back to the same exact freight units and again, plan all over again. Okay, and let's say I don't want to combine those two sets of goods, I'm canceling the last document, and now finally, in the cockpit, I should have nothing. Okay, the freight order disappears, and I can go back to my freight units, which are actually these here, 6, 10, and, and now I only have these 6, 10 here because that's the one I'm looking at, and the other one is 6, 0, 9. So 6, 10 and 6, 0, 9. Let's go to the cockpit here and look for those. For one, two, six, ten, and it should still be there. There you go. And you see it's still divided into four stages, basically because I haven't left the cockpit, I haven't uh, saved and refreshed or anything like that, so it still shows as four different stages. Same thing as the 09, 1, 2, and if we scroll up, 3, 4. See, they're all still there. So if I wanted to combine them again, I could, 9, 2, 6, 10. I would have to always select all the iterations of the freight unit that show up there to plan again. Okay, if I want to combine them all again, if I want to leave 09 out of the picture, I just don't select it. I go back to proposals and now I plan again. Basically, that's how it would work if you've made a mistake when you're planning your freight unit. Okay, I think this is very useful <clears throat> because a lot of people, um, I, I talk about deleting, oh, you just delete the freight order. You just cancel it. But if I don't show you where it is, it's not really easy to find. And then you'll have tons of freight orders maybe that you planned unwillingly that will show up in your cockpit. Okay, so now you have a chance to select a different proposal, maybe some with less legs or more legs or something that you want going to a different airport. Let's select uh, transportation eight. We accept the planning instead of the route now. We go directly to planning and we'll have our freight orders there immediately, okay? So that's the way this works. Now we would save and have these uh, freight orders generated as well. And that's it, we would be basically at the same point that we were uh, once we have already planned, okay? So remember, just because you've saved the freight order doesn't mean that you're done. You can go into each individual one and cancel it. The same thing for the actual freight unit, to be honest. Actually, I can select uh, all of these and just delete. That I don't even want to see them there, for example. Maybe I can just go one by one if it's not allowing me. Maybe it's not allowing me to delete them. There you go, in, in batches. There you go. Let me try once again and see if I can do that. Yes, okay, so before it was just a glitch. Okay, so they're all gone, <clears throat> and I can plan again. Okay, you can also cancel your freight unit documents in your DTR documents.
that's also something that's quite important. See here now we only have the freight unit ETR outbound. We can also get rid of the freight unit document if we wanted to cancel it because let's say the everything's wrong all the way back to the inbound mm -hmm. delivery document, right? We're saying now there's going to be different dates, there's going to be different goods, we, we made a mistake in the PO, God knows what happened and now we need to go all the way back to the beginning and re um, do another uh, shopping cart, PO, get a new inbound delivery number and so on. So what happens to these documents? These documents remain in TM unless they're canceled or blocked, right? They remain there waiting to be planned for until the end of time. So basically, you can just simply click on edit under the freight unit document here and cancel this document here. You would have to do that just so that we can get rid of these documents in TM. You simply cancel this document and then planning would be impossible as the freight unit would never show up. Yeah, I'm not going to cancel it so I don't ruin anyone's training, but that's the way. You click on edit, making sure you're looking at your freight unit, cancel document. Okay, that's simple. With DTRs, you can navigate to your DTR document. And now once you're in your DTR, you can do the edit option too. Now you'll realize that you don't have a cancel document option. What you do have is a blocking option here. Okay, and you can set a manual block for this DTR. Okay, you can say block reason, anything, block for delivery, stage is not relevant for planning, request cargo is missing. I mean, whatever it is that you want to block the planning for this DTR, you can also say that the plan, you can also pl block the planning or the submission of events for the DTR as well. You can override that blocking afterwards. So there's tons of things you can do. But once you've deleted the cancel the freight unit, the planning will be impossible. So basically that's it. It's an irreversible action. So if you do it, you're sure that you want to do that exactly. Okay. So that's basically for the documents that we want to plan for. We understood how to do the planning again. We also saw how to submit events in CCP and in TM. Remember, to submit events, you need to do them directly from the freight order, not the um, freight unit. To change locations, remember that, changing locations, charges, dates, we did that directly from the freight order, not the freight unit, even though it seems, if we look at the freight unit, that when you go to the freight unit document and you navigate to the uh, stages tab, Remember that there was an option, if I click on edit, to change the Incoterm location. But always change the locations by freight order and always do it in the main carriage location. Okay, so you can edit that one and the system will automatically update all other stages, all other freight orders. Okay, so we can cancel this one. Now what else? Um, Basically, the uh, events, the DTRs, I think everything that we wanted to cover is there. CCP, I think we saw enough of CCP. It's not something, remember, this is not something you are doing. It's vendor freight forwarder who's submitting events. And these are reflected in TM, which is where you would go in if you were a TA01 or 07. And you would actually look for a freight order. Actually, if you want, I can... Go back to the search screen, freight orders, and see if by, uh, let me try to cheat the system and by just putting a date, <clears throat> I can get uh, enough information. So I'm going to the freight order management. I'm just going to look for a freight order to remind you what tabs you have to look at to submit events, notes, attachments, and so on. Okay, today I'm going to have to cut it exactly at 3.30 because I have another session after with some students. So if there's any question, let's ask it now before the time is up. If not, I'm just gonna add a date here and look for a couple of freight orders and should be it. So let me actually, let me put the uh, created by instead. Okay, so Zina. Okay, you're in. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, but it's a bit of a, uh, uh, more of a confusion, but a concern uh, regarding 
the scope of work comes out is produced after we do the selection, as we had discussed yesterday. Um, but practically on ground, normally, isn't it supposed to be the procurement who should be doing the process uh, for the uh, solicitation to know which would be the best route and the best um, price before going to select the proposals in the system. Does that make sense of what I'm asking? Uh, yes. But uh, just so you understand, and this is sorry, but there's tons of echo when I talk and you're unmuted. Uh, the way that works is that we're only producing a plan, okay, an estimate. We're not telling the vendors or freight forwarders what to do, in a sense. So I know that makes you think maybe then why are we even doing this? In a sense, it's because this we're making the system smarter so that in the long run based on our master data that comes from actual past historical data from procurement division, vendors, and other costs that we've had in the past, we're adding that to the TM system. And that's how the TM system is actually delivering the cost, all right, the uh, transportation locations, transportation plan. And what the intention is that after a year, two years, three years, we can compare our estimated plans, cost, routes, means of transport, everything that we tend to plan with, with the actuals that the uh, procurement division with the roles of TS-02, TS-08 will be adding in those freight orders. So it, it eventually it's for a more of a long run optimization of transport and cost, not an immediate change. Okay, we're not going to provide the vendors with the price that we think is exact or the actual market. We still want them to give us back their price, but now we at least have an estimate of more or less what we should be receiving from them. That's the whole intention. That's why one step comes before the other. Okay, that's why we have the, uh, the planning before we have the actual updating of the uh, freight order. Okay, that's why in the, in the screen that I have now, that's the way it's displayed. Is that clear, Zena? Uh Yes, it is clear, but at the end of the day, whatever procurement uh, will we'll decide uh, through the solicitation, through the whole process, after the shopping cart is raised, uh, that will be the end result, which will have to be edited on the BFO, correct? Exactly. Correct, yes. Uh, another question, just a second, Gassan. Yeah, uh, Brian, uh, in regard to the plan and the estimated cost and whatever appears, the planner, the logistic uh, planner, he will be sent it to the requisitioner to put the estimated price in the shopping cart, right? The, the idea is that exactly. attaching the SOW and also letting them know what would be the estimated price. Yeah, yeah they're going to attach the SOW and it has the price in it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, at the end, the end result will always be what procurement will come up with, and then all the editing will have to be done and uh, uh, verified and reconciled after. Absolutely. Yes. That's the process. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. Where? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay, thanks, Brian. I think no more from our side. Okay, then. Well, as always, a pleasure from my side. We'll see each other, I think, next week. I don't know if we'll have these support sessions exactly. I'll, I'll find out. We'll talk with the team and see what we do, but I'll communicate with you guys nonetheless through email. We will continue to have the webcasts uh, during the day at 11. You guys can join those. We have some uh, BI sessions next week that I think you guys are going to join. But nonetheless, if you need more of these sessions, uh, let us know. Uh, send me an email, too, so I can arrange that. But this would be our last session up until the, the exam date, okay? So if you need more help, more support, I'll be around. Let me know, all right? I'm unmuting you guys there, Zina. Okay. Uh, just, uh, can you hear me? Yes. 